nope, he's going to be a dick about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> Tuesday night. Hey, everybody, we're muted. Welcome to Between the Rolls. He's a dick. <laughs> Folks, it's Tuesday night. You know what that means? Murder Hobo Live or Murder Hobo Inc. goes live with Between the Rolls, our stab at a top. So, welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Uh, don't worry, we won't keep you long. You'll get to see the debate. Uh, Joe Biden's ready to pee, and Donald's ready to yell, and nobody gives a shit because if you're still undecided, you're a mutant. Anyway, moving on. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy cool stuff like this hoodie. Yeah, that's right. Is Joe cool Garrison going to be on the debates? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, the link's down there. If you want to join us on Discord and talk about D&D whenever, Carol's always on. Uh, it's <laughs> down there. Playing one of her thousands of No, I do actually. <laughs> writing her email. I'm always on it. Uh, out <laughs> killing cats because oh, how, how were the emails that. this week? <laughs> right. Emails were daunting. No, they, they were okay. <laughs> Most importantly, if you want to be on this show or one of the one shots coming up next week, uh, M Hobo Inc., either at Twitter or Gmail, let us know. We'll get you uh, locked in like our four did on Saturday. We had a real blast. You know the drill. We're going to go ahead and do a recap quickly. Uh, then we're going to move on to our discussion on civilizations and how they play out in campaigns. Should be a weird discussion since uh, my outline was for shizzle. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's introduce the cast. Uh, David, start off with you. Yeah. Hi, I'm David. I am uh, a guest here on Between the Rolls. I've been on for quite a while <laughs> and then uh i'm also on the thursday show uh our cacophony episodes so our attempt at a ongoing soap opera that this is going to be ending soon <laughs> reach so. an end point yep um uh, fuck it we'll screw everything up here let's cross the way carol thorn between two roses you're up what <laughs> I'm not the thorn. I am the rose. No, okay, no. She said that. the Thor, you know? Mjolnir and all that. Yeah, yeah. 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 So much. She's you know. showing the guns. No, no. With like the stupid wing helmet. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that, that Thor. Thor. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, the adventures in babysitting Thor. <laughs> who, was, who was Vincent D'Onofrio? Mm -hmm. So I guess I get to. So hi, I'm Carol. I am not a tabaxi hater like they all think I am. <laughs> She's Just actually cats. a tabaxi racist. I, we were talking about this. I'm going to actually bring a tabaxi one of these weeks. Uh, coming up with a pretty interesting concept. She's uh, actually I, displacing her racism of tabaxis to uh, dogs. That's right. Although I love dogs too. I like all critters, let's face it. Uh, but anyways, I am a commission mini painter and I'm also a longtime gamer and a sometime GM. And oh, you might be happy to know I am working on something that um, maybe I'll be able to run at the end of October because it's hey, kind of I call dibs on the end of October. No, me. No, it's all right. I already set it up months ago. <laughs> oh, did he? I did. Oh. He did, actually. Frank oh, forgets. No, I don't remember shit. <laughs> Kyle, yeah, uh, your lead in. Hey, everybody. I'm <laughs> Kyle. And uh, I play Dewey Dacamel on the uh, the campaign, uh, as well as write some one shots on occasion that I will run at some point if I ever feel like running them. You mean like in October? The last week of October. That's right. So you're doing the you're doing the Halloween show. Actually, he realizes the last week of October, if I figured out right, is the campaign. So you're wrong. Actually, is it going to be? <laughs> campaign will okay. be over before then <clears throat> it that ends is. this weekend actually As everybody fucking dies lord bushmill goes ape shit spoiler alert <laughs> it's gonna be a bloodbath <laughs> folks uh we had the privilege of running three games for you this weekend and uh each one of them was his own kind of fun uh sadly kyle and carol could not participate in them uh but carol will be given a wrap up on one of them so let's start off with cacophony david uh how'd you guys do uh, i thought we did well frank how did we do <laughs> we survived 
Well, you didn't get your shit, shit pushed in by the uh, big bad. Uh, speaking of uh, stinky, don't forget oddfishgames.com to make your game smell better and pirate dog dice to kill your players with big oh, red. <laughs> Go ahead, David. Uh, That's a Yeah, so, uh, Thursday <laughs> was our cacophony episode. And yeah, it, like I said earlier, it is the continuation of our soap opera that we attempted on Murder Hub. <laughs> So uh, basically we wrapped uh, things up uh, in this past episode. We have one more episode where it all just kind of weaves together explanations for things and probably some kind of re revelation or something. I don't know. But uh, anyway, there no these past there. episodes were like the ghost of Zadar's <laughs> girlfriend's past. <laughs> and then they show, well, boyfriend and girlfriend. So... And all comes together. So uh, this episode picks up where the previous episode left off. Uh, returning uh, back from their run-in with Pretty Boy Floyd, they head back to the guild hall, find that the door is, is ajar. Uh, they look in. Uh, <laughs> from under, these nuts is missing. Uh, and his his... His assistant, faithful sidekick. Uh, yeah, his faithful sidekick is unconscious on the floor. So basically, we walk in on somebody trying to rob the place. So, so uh, anyway, the person who robbed it saw uh, a, not, a moment of opportunity because somebody else had already been there uh, and knocked Fauntleroy out. So anyway, small encounter ensued like that. We ended up uh, just not only beating the shit out of the guy and tangling the whole place in webs. And yeah, the authorities were just like, I, I, I don't even know what to do. So, <laughs> but uh, we uh, get a description of the person that, that had left and uh, attacked Fauntleroy from the perpetrator <laughs> of the, of the attempted robbery of the, the guild hall. Anyway. So, our intrepid heroes run outside, try to catch up to our guild master, who's in the midst of a heated uh, fight between <laughs> one of the monks from the Assassin's Guild that, that uh, tried to kill us in previous episodes. Uh, <laughs> one that Zadar actually kind of accosted a little bit. So, anyway, whole lot of whole lot of bloodshed that evening uh people died <laughs> you know even even some bystanders you'll just have to watch the episode to see how that happened <laughs> anyway and it is in the archive it is in the archive but basically this episode uh wraps up with uh, a battle you know between the uh the forces of good which are you know the guild members yeah, that is zadar uh, Cammy and Daphne, <laughs> and um, culminated in a battle on one of the ships uh, trying to leave port. Uh, they stop the ship. Uh, the big bad is revealed. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, some very charismatic sailors, I'll use that term instead of the other one. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it would. It was all just a beautiful mess. You'll just have to watch the episode. Uh, all of it, the big reveal was that the, well, I'm not going to ruin it. Just just watch it. So, but everything watch will tie enjoy. up. Just watch and enjoy. Everything will wrap up uh, in the next episode. So all your answers will, all your questions will be answered. So there we go. Will Gibble and Harris get more coffee? I hope they do. And <laughs> Uh, next up was the Saturday episode, episode 152. Folks, wow. we're going to uh, move all of our shows to audio-only podcast in the very <laughs> future. Uh, it's just taking me a while to strip that bullshit out. Saturday's game featured four, shall we say, newer to the fold murder hobos, but each had their own experience with us. Carol, how did they do and what did they do? 
Welcome to the big leagues, Rook. <laughs> I know, actually. Uh, so I had two of them had actually played on here before because I know one was GM Travis. I don't mm -hmm. remember the other guy. I don't remember which one of them actually played. The other one had played before, but no, they were great. And I, I was going to say, you know, it's funny. The other play guy played with us. Hey, yeah, yeah, because he described you guys as being dark. <laughs> yeah, remember? <laughs> that's, right, that's right. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but we can't. Well, but the funny thing is, my whole my whole thing is, I thought they were fantastic players. I thought, you know, here we have four new players, but yet same old shenanigans, same old insanity. Uh, maybe not so much murder, trying to kill each other, backstab each other, but they they, they did a lot of and they did a lot of funny shenanigans. Uh, is all I could all I could say. I think I loved our tobacco. See, I love that tobacco. Um, and I think you met. <laughs> She's got many tobacco friends, folks. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, all right. So, what is it? She's got Did all the tobacco friends. Travis, Travis played the tobacco, right? Yes. And I mean, I uh -huh. love how he leaned into the accent, and it was just what it was. Believe me, watch it. it. it it, it's funny how Another all the tobacco ten more have minutes accents. of tobacco love and won't believe. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, no, and then that's gonna say I'm trying to remember what actually I remember. Okay, so I remember get started. The heroes were actually heroes because they had captured this highwayman. Now this happened before we cut to the action. They had captured this highwayman and found that he had a bounty. He had a wanted poster on him because apparently he was egotistical. Uh, showing that there was a bounty for him for a hundred gold. Now it's a good picture. This is sort of you know the, I think the very funny... rare that they get the nose right on those bounty posters. Thank That's you. true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so basically, all they had to do was bring him back to town and turn him in. Yes, easier said than done. So uh, let's see if I recall. Because, of course, I was actually working when I listened to this. So sometimes my recall is sometimes my attention is a little split. Help, help. Uh, remember, help. they got into town. Hang on a second. There's a D&D &D reference. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and you know what? Apparently, the campaign is not the only group that's good at splitting the party. I believe at some point they split it three ways. Mm -hmm. But that that's mm -hmm. later on. But when they first got in, I we had Frank's, you know, randomly rolled uh, NPCs that there are yeah, NPC interactions that they run into. And let's see, I remember one was one half was like a food. I know one had wine and that food was the vendor old, and drink vendor, the, mm -hmm. the food vendor. And I believe our bard, uh, I can't think the halfling bard. She she did not enjoy the food. It did not sit well with her. Um, but the drink, I think the drink was pretty decent, but this guy, this guy they brought in apparently is a celebrity amongst the town. Everybody knows who he is. And I think everybody likes him, even norm. though he's <laughs> norm, man. That's what I was going to say. It's the yeah, norm. It's probably about right. And even though he's a, he's a total, you know, outlaw and an asshole. Everybody loves him. Except whoa, whoa, whoa. you didn't watch the show. I think you're, I think you're missing one hero there. What? Which watch one? the show. Got to watch the show. Yeah, but I did watch the show. Did you watch yeah, the end? I did, but said once again, I was working at the time, so I'm trying. Folks, to... there were five heroes, five of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that was yeah, but that was an NPC, right? Because there were only four players. Oh yeah, yeah. So you saved lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they didn't save Tabaxi lives there, Carol. So I figured you'd be happy. Yeah, Tabaxi's got nine of them anyway. I, so. I think I popped in at that point where you were saying about yeah, that's racist to Tabaxi. So I threw that in the chat just for shits and giggles. <laughs> and you know what? Eventually, that'll disappear when the whole when the the video disappears off of Twitch. So no one will be the wiser anyway. So. But uh, let's see. They ran into the two NPCs and the the, the old guy. You had me thinking that at any point somebody was going to jump in and spring this guy, like before Gee, they even. That act. sounds like a plot device. <laughs> yeah, well, and I and you know what? I was pleasantly surprised when they actually got him to the jail cell without too much interference. There was stuff that happened, but without too much interference, and they 
they got the 100 gold. Now, from what I hear, people bail him out for 100 gold. So apparently it's a revolving door thing where peers can get rich if they really want to because his buddies will bail him out, give him 100 gold, and then he'll do something else and the heroes could get him. And then they get paid the 100 gold and it just keeps going. So I thought that was an interesting trope right there that you used that, that yeah that was that made me laugh um but i remember they ended up at a bar i'm just gonna catch a few highlights the bar with uh where they got a box um and they what was the box's it. name it had schrodinger on it dad didn't remember that well you also have it in the notes and i but i remember this this is of course i knew what was going to be in that box and anybody who knows the name schrodinger is going to know what's in that dead box. tabaxi Paltrow's head. <laughs> it was some sort of a large wildcat, wasn't it? It was a saber-toothed tiger. Saber if they would have opened it outside, it would have been completely different. It would have been Catwoman. Oh, that... An arch villain. Because I remember you said... I did hear you say uh, the fact that, okay, if you open it inside, then something happens. Because you open it inside. So I didn't know what it was would happen if it opened up. I also think, wasn't there a fog cloud that came out of there too or something? It was fog cloud inside and thunder wave outside. So they opened the box and there's a cat, which of course it's saber tooth tiger. It wasn't too happy. So I think it tried to eat him until I believe the bard put it to sleep. Yep. Which Not makes... that way. Not that way, folks. Not that way. Didn't oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Spells sleep and she rolled exactly it was amazing she rolled exactly the amount of hit points she needed to put to sleep i was pissed but <laughs> dice giveth dice taken away it was, it was you know I dog dice folks like well i love dice rolls when they make for dramatic effects too um what else happened after trying to remember what happened after that um, chase oh see yeah this is when i started friggin uh screw yes there was a, that's when they split up the party three ways by the way was after they left that bar and they i believe that was when um their quarry and i can't remember his name got away so they had to try to chase him down in the end i mean you know what i'm just gonna skip to it because i don't he said this is when skip i was to the end <laughs> sure because you know what you skip know to what? the loo my darling <laughs> happened, you want to see what happened watch the show because there was, you go it was good see i mean i'm trying to actually just give everybody a taste of things rather than a full blow by blow i'm trying to do that more because i want people to go to the archives and actually watch the show not just take it from us you know it's 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 that's the fun i mean that's where all the jokes come from see the origins of them but they do i know they do get their quarry and heinous I, torque did they get, oh yeah, and they kept calling him anus. Yes. Anus. That was funny too. A lot of, lot of anal it, jokes came out. I forget, they, I know they did not make the D12 roll at the end. You beat them, but did you actually have them get paid twice for turning him back in a second time? The die roll at the end was deciding whether or not Hanus was telling the truth. They lost oh. the die roll and Hanus was telling the truth. He actually did save guards. Hero style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so right. They so did not what? get paid for the second capture after breaking his leg, after landing on him, after knocking him into the man who's eating grapes in his apartment by himself. <laughs> oh, after yeah, the funny. tabaxi clawed and didn't fall in the hole in the roof. And the shower and the woman in the shower. Who yes, the they got caught peeping twice. Peepers. I believe wasn't wasn't that the Tabaxi that did, or was it one of Tabaxi the Tabaxi got the woman in the shower, and the uh, female or the halfling bard caught the naked sunbathers on the roof. Oh, I, I was so hoping the woman used the Tabaxi as a loofah or something like that. That would have been funny, but no, she did. He 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 booked it as soon as he realized it was going on. He freaking actually he you know he left. And, but she saw him because he did not make a very good stealth check and screamed out loud. Ah! How'd that go so, again? Ah! One more time. One more time. With feeling this day. Ah! Is that good? <laughs> that's my good for me. <laughs> Wow. Are you sure that's the right kind of, you know, vocals, vocalization you want to hear, you know? 
No, that's usually I want stop or I'll call the cops. So <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> Oh well, I said wait till Saturday. Where I'll probably flip and sit here and scream to scream into the void at the beginning of the friggin'. Lord friggin Bushmill the- does hate your guts. Is that your wrap up then? Wait, he doesn't hate me. He hates the rest of the party. He talks. Tell, tell him. Tell him a joke. No. <laughs> Moving on to Sunday's game, the <laughs> tri generational game, episode one fifty three, entitled "Wrapping It Up." Uh, the Margu campaign is at the Nazumi ruins in the Tabaxi jungle at an old um, Tortle city. <laughs> That's a lot of shit going on just there. Wasn't uh, there a pizza place in there too? There is a pizza place in there. Oh my god! Closed. Really? Uh, the previous week they had decided to go out in a typhoon or hurricane, depending on, uh, which area of the world you're at and managed to knock loose a gem encrusted egg, uh, that was owned by a black dragon. Uh, said black dragon has recovered, recouped most of his losses, but is quite pissed. Uh, the group decided to check on a few more places, but found out that the, a uh, paltry swarm of poisonous snakes proved a little bit too poisonous for him to handle. Uh, hijinks ensued when one of them used a magic item that he had found earlier, a tube of disruption. Uh, he was going to throw it and knock the dragon off its arc. Uh, unfortunately, he rolled a five, so he did a <laughs> damage to everything else uh it started to wrap up as they tried to find where the uh, diamond encrusted orb had gone turns out the dragon has snatched it up put it back on the temple just as a large pachyderm plows through them it appears as though our margu campaigners have found a drug cattel operating in the nazumi ruins uh their campaign adventure will most likely also wrap up sunday so this week we got a lot of wrap-ups going on uh and we'll see how that plays out for all three. except for the campaign we are not wrapping up the, we are not <laughs> You're wrapping up the yaddle section That's- they aren't they aren't wrapping up their campaign they're just probably going to be done with nazumi will they go back to nazumi's capital uh or i'm sorry the uh feline capital which I think is what uh, Carol hates the most, isn't it? Oh, shut up. I do not. Uh, Or maybe they go to the turtle (laughs) and see if uh, the turtle want uh, the artifacts that they have found because they know stealing artifacts is illegal to the tabaxi. Find (laughs) out Sunday, Sunday, Sunday around 4.15. Enough of the recaps. They are all in the archive. Please take a look at your leisure. Yes, Kyle. Oh, I forgot what it is. You pay for the whole seat, but you only need the edge. That's right. That's right. You know, that was somewhat distressing the way you said it. Try it again. <laughs> you know that. <sighs> me, 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 me. Mommy made me mush my M&M's. Pay for the whole seat, but you only need the edge. Oh, no. That was awful. Ugh. <laughs> Somebody is out of practice. I okay, am. Wow. Folks, uh, <laughs> Yes. Hey, one more thing, and not about the games. You, you hate Tabaxi. Oh, we got you it. Took it. You took it, Kyle, to record a theme for us because he is just. I I, I love the crazy singing. It, Kyle, you know I like your idea. Uh, I've got an idea for you. Uh, try this. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> I think it's got a ring to it. Well, in that style that you. Do Watch the episode of The Boys. <laughs> this past week. <laughs> uh, folks, folks, today's uh, discussion is civilization in a campaign. Uh, a lot of us just play in feudal Europe uh, because we're spoiled white kids and we don't know any better. You know, that happens. Uh, not making excuses, just saying that's how it is. Uh, however, the longer you play, the more you can discover, hey, you know, why do I need feudal Europe? Uh, Maybe I want feudal Japan. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe I, you know, want to uh, run in the jungles uh, with the great Zulu warriors. That'd be cool. Maybe you just like to run around weird pyramids and you want to go Mayan. Either way, you can do that. Uh, One of the things about that, though, is we all know civilizations come in steps. You start off with your hunter gatherers, then you go to your agriculture, then you go to small collectives, yada, 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 all the way up to empires. 
You can put. What the hell? <laughs> oh, he he he, now his other one locked up. <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna, are you gonna leave? Are you gonna leave that look? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, but you know, you can play in the empire, you can play in the Roman empire, but do you play in the ascendancy or descendancy, uh, or right in the middle? How does that play out? Well, everything's mapped already, but there's cool magic items or nothing's mapped out and you got to go deal with the Gauls, but there's not a whole lot of magic. So, uh, the weird discussion that I came up with is, uh, what kind of civilization, would you want to run a campaign in and be quasi specific? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to make it look good, Frank. It's all it's for you. you. It's never going to happen. Kyle, you've been shutting up for 25 minutes, so it's your yeah. turn to start this. Tell yeah. us about your favorite civilization and how you would run a campaign in it. Oh, <laughs> screw you, Frank. I wasn't ready to pick one. I thought we'd just start at the beginning and progress through the stages of civilization. You know what? Frank is amiable to that. Go ahead. Start with uh, small community hunter gatherers and agriculture. Well, what were we talking about, though? I don't remember. Something right. stupid. I think we're talking about how much Carol hates Tabaxi. I think that's oh, she really hates them. I mean, those two knives, you may or may not be able to see them on the wall there. They're her cat skin and knives. If, if Carol were a dog, she'd be one of those pit bulls that actually crashes into your house and eats your children and cats. That's how much she hates them. It would go after the cats first, but it would make sure it got the children because they smell like cats. And use them as armor. No, wait, that is Caitlin. Never mind. Okay, yeah. Kyle, <laughs> start us off. Uh, Hunter Gather. Let's do one and two. Hunter Gather. Nah, fuck it. One and two. Hunter gatherer or agriculture? Let's start there. Hunter gatherer agriculture. Nazi knives. <laughs> yeah, right. The druid. Uh, well, so starting off with say something small, nomadic, or a kind of a tribal feel where it's a hunter gatherer, <laughs> or it's maybe say the beginning stages of starting up an agricultural. Um, there's a lot of issues that I find with that. Actually, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> the problem with your stupid theme tonight, Frank, is it's a big subject. It's a mother big subject. Because you got to be like, okay, are we doing this like in the ages, like the Stone Age, the current age? Is this just after a huge empire fell down and we're starting all over from scratch? Well, I was going to describe it in green room, but Carol's ass kissing the tabaxi of left oh, over whiskers than I got. <laughs> Either way. Sure we're with, hey, hey, Carol, talking. Carol, get. Ah, you know, don't interrupt. Bags, but hold it in. Hold it in till the end. No, so the question is so if you're going to start a nomadic campaign um, or a tribal campaign, you have a few issues you got to figure out first. You know, are you doing a Stone Age bit or just after? The fall of that great Roman Empire or something where everything is completely kaput and magic has wiped out everything, you know, because Dungeons and Dragons takes place in a post-apocalyptic post world. Otherwise, there would be no dungeons, maybe no dragons, um, in which case um, you have to decide what the time setting is. Um, uh, Gosh, I had other stuff to figure out too, but I don't know. <laughs> well, the other thing is just defining the civilization for what it is. If it's nomadic, if it's tribal, chances are um, you're dealing with a, a family system, a clan. If we're talking about dwarves, uh, you're related to everybody in your family and everyone else who is not in the tribe, who is not a member of the family can't be trusted. So if you're going to start a campaign in that area, I find you probably have to make sure that every single PC is talking, or all the players are talking to each other and just like, okay, well, I'm your third cousin from your Aunt Beth Ruth, who is the shaman of Stephen, who did that and that. And that might nip uh, players' creativity in the bud a little bit. But if you're saying it's the start of 
the world itself, you can also add in um, that the players get to change and make everything what they want out of it. Fair. So, for example, there might not be any owlbears because there's been no wizards to ever create an owlbear. Or maybe they really did just pop out of nowhere, in which case there is a true owlbear out there who gave birth to all the other owlbears out there. And depending on how your players react to it will affect any future campaigns also set in this world, which can be rather interesting. Um, as far as campaign ideas for that kind of world, um, a lot of it is really going to be centered on the tribe. And so you're going to kind of build it like you were building a city where each of the players has a say. And you have to continue to throw in survival things about that as well. Um, for example, making sure Timmy gets fed or going to get the medicine for Tommy. You Monkey fail wrench? at one of them, they die. Monkey wrench? Monkey wrench. Uh, the PCs have been banished from the clan and have to start out on their own. Ooh, I like that. By the way, either way, there's going to be some romance involved. And if DMs, you're not really interested in it, that clan is going to die out real fucking quick. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the Kentucky version mm -hmm. of D&D. &D. Sure. Fair enough. Or if you say take it um, like say uh, the barbarian tribes that we have in D&D &D now um, at that point you oof um, See, this is the best part about Between the Rolls is the spark of creativity. Right. <laughs> There's no spark. Absolutely. It no is spark. an open flame. Don't get burned. <laughs> well, if you're doing barbarian and nomadic, let's not say barbarian, nomadic, tribal, in modern times, you have to figure out why they've chosen to separate themselves, why they've chosen to be nomadic. You know, are they... Do they hate magic? Uh, or maybe your people a long, long time ago were tasked with guarding the seals, and so your tribe traveled to each of the seals. That's right. To make sure that they are safe and okay, otherwise demons flood in. And it's all big secret. None of the, the tribe knows exactly why they're doing it, except maybe the elder. And he's the only one to know, and you just get to question why you get to do this or you're an outside group who is studying this for some odd reason and you have to gain the trust of a uh, uh of the tribe day 37 after watching them club seals incessantly i am still confused as to why they are present mortimer <laughs> j sneed educator <laughs> yes Ah, very good. David, uh, let's move up to the collective, a republic, a democracy, or an overlord situation. What do you think? Overlord. No. <laughs> uh, I kind of like the, the dichotomy of a, a confederation or a republic. Sure. Um, I mean, I kind of like that. I mean, get past all the, you know, just the, the regular feudal and vassal yes and just go straight into the political intrigue you know so factions cartels things like that you know i mean D, &D gives you a lot of tools to to work with 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 creating a setting like that um you know with already established um factions actually and you can build that into your campaign you know so there's guilds too so you know but um yeah, I mean, I would probably rather like um, a confederation uh, to where there's different establishments that make up an empire. So, you know, established cities and all that. Uh, and this is just going from the, the point of view as just ju jumping in feet first into something and kind of making it up as you go kind of like the show so <laughs> you know but uh well there is a very specific reason i put this 
discussion at this time. I can't imagine what that is. <laughs> well, what, is what is it? What is it? Tell us, Frank. Uh, with the Saturday campaign ended, it'll be time mm-hmm. for doing a new campaign. So I need That's to figure true. out, uh, putting the feelers out and see what you guys are looking at. Mm-hmm. Continue with your confederation. Continue with the joke. Uh, the joke. Okay. The, um, you know, the, the, the thing about the confederation, okay, I mean, from what I understand about confederations, then they, they make up a, a whole uh, pretty much, you know, like an empire or I'm trying to think of. Like a bunch of city-states. Greece, yeah, city-states. And, and they have yeah. cool flags. Yeah. That's bars the, and bars. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gosh. No, boys. Never meaning no harm. Lord, Lord Bo and Lord uh, Duke. <laughs> Luke. Yeah, Lord no, Luke. Duke. 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 You're, you're... So, do you want the Confederation to be city states? Do you want them to be merchant guilds? Uh, do you want Renaissance Italy style or pre Renaissance Italy style? He's so freaking cool. Uh, probably Renaissance Italy style and all that. You know, um, so a lot of main leaders who control everything but exactly still allow merchants to thrive. Yes, yes. So I like that concept. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, Carol, tell me about national level, a true nation, whether it's a theocracy, whether it's a kingdom, whether it is a republic, whether I mean, it's a like- czar, czar and czarina. What? Well, let's. I do. I like you know. Because D and D in that era, swords and and magic and such, and I was I I do I love that part past with, you've got the kingdom. I like it. I like uh, and the kingdom I'm from, or maybe not, or running too. I, I kind of like I said I've sort of done this in my own world where I have a kingdom with a benevolent ruler, but right next door is the one with the freaking tyrant who would like to take over the kingdom with the benevolent ruler, uh, and add it to his holdings. So I mean, I love I like political intrigue. So I would I would say I would say a mix. I mean, if you want to really build a world on a world, I know maybe this is world, not just a kingdom. As for kingdom, I want to play in. I would yeah. I personally I do. I like the traditional benevolent king uh, to be from you know from that kingdom. Uh, but you know I'm not picky. I mean anything that's interesting. You know, I could go with the Tsar and Tsarina. I could go with, you mentioned feudal Japan. And one of the things I was thinking of is there's actually like pretty much there are game systems that almost cover every single thing we're talking about, every different type of thing we're talking about here. I mean, I know I know this, right? In that other game I play, we have the Milwaukee Express. Say it! Say it! Say it! Pathfinder! <laughs> So in Galarian, there is the Moagi Express. 30 minutes, folks. Which is, shush, you guys said <laughs> say it. So that is a jungle. That is that is a jungle. Um, they, you know, but I was also thinking there is, um, oh, shoot, what's the game? Damn it. There is one about feudal Japan. Jumanji. Which one? Jumanji. No, 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 no. No, and there's a card game that they also have, and I, it, it's, I, and I know the game is just slipped my mind, um, and I'm gonna friggin' get smacked by my friends upstairs because yeah. we've played it before, and there's there's a game where you can actually, yeah, where you play literally in feudal Japan, and it's it's interesting because that is so much politics. You literally, you have to play politics in that game. Is it survive. risk? <laughs> risk. No. No, it is all, it's role play. It is all role play. Um, I keep saying 7C, but that's not it. That's, that's, uh, that's still more like Europe. Um, shit. I can't remember the name of the damn game. Skip to, like to the end. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, but no, I was, I'm not, I'm not hugely particular. As, I like intrigue. So as long as there's some sort of political intrigue in the game, I'm good. You know, I love secrets and mysteries. If you could not tell from Taryn's backstory, you know, with all the holes I left in for you to fill so I could solve it. We know you ain't into jokes. <laughs> What's that? What's Aren't that? into jokes. We know that much. Uh, I'm going to look up that freaking game. Uh, if you want to go on to another question, but that's my, that's my answer. Um, 
Uh, new topic, same topic, mm-hmm. weird topic, putting a twist on it. So in the three campaigns that we have, uh, we've got Cacophony, which is city-state material, uh, only they're in the same city, uh, run by a council. Okay, nice. Uh, the Sunday campaign was set up entirely <laughs> different, and they were going to go to seven different nations. Instead, they just fucked around in the Greek land. Uh, but that appears to be a larger city-state uh, in the middle of a civil war. And then in the Margu campaign, they've been halfway across the continent already, uh, and passed through at least three nations with different forms of government. So the question for you guys now is, do you want to, would you, do you prefer to stick with, I'm in this nation and this is all I know, this is all I want to know, or this is all I need to know, or do you want to go to Japan, followed by Russia, followed by France, followed by Venezuela? Uh, start with put out to you why not do a soviet union you just grab people from all over the different countries and you swirl them all together and then it's like "Ah." because it's all gray in the soviet union (laughs) although i could do my dwarf impression (laughs) (laughs) oh well okay you know what you're up expound on that idea i am uh that that was really just the idea I was kind of jumping in. So visit Yugoslavia and Bulgaria. Well, I mean, ideally you want to, I mean, at least as far as my interest is concerned, is digging into the world that's around you. And you can certainly do that by going to different nations if it's something that really takes place. And I mean, a lot of civilizations and traveling around, I think, can actually follow the the tier system of play that is D&D, which is, you know, one through five, you are working in a small hamlet, maybe near a city state or something like that, where you eventually will go to that city state, which um, is part of a republic, a confederation of all that, who then sends you on a diplomatic mission over to the nation of Roma Tomatoes, where things do not go very well and Roma Tomatoes decides in order to defend themselves, I'm going to conquer everyone around me. In which case, you then become part of an empire and all that. And and all of this can follow tiered gameplay, I feel like. Especially if you try and just keep it in one world. You're not really plane hopping. You're not going necessarily into the underdark. Or if you do, you're not going very deep. Um, and it's a very heavily political campaign. Um, instead of fighting monsters, you're fighting savages and making deals with them, um, which I think is a good way of getting the players into that mindset of questioning what civilization is and whether the civilization they're part of is any good. So to clarify, because I think I know what you mean, but I want to make sure. And for that's good, because I had no idea what I meant. Wait, when you say tier system, you're you are alluding to the fact that, <clears throat> excuse me, one through third or one through fourth level, you're doing this, and then the next mid group, you're kind of doing this, and then as you grow, you're making a big circle. Wow, what the hell was that? Yeah. Um, yeah, essentially. That can be it. You can certainly set an entire campaign in your tribe. And again, like I said earlier, it's all about growing the tribe into something and maybe even turning it into the next stage of civilization, in which case you're staying in one place most of the time. But I think um, with the way and the power level that if you stay in one place too long, um, it becomes a lot of work for the DM as well as maybe a touch boring i mean i can see that a lot of hard work to just make one place really interesting but it can be done it's fun but it depends on the players good answer david same question which i like do you like city state do you like roaming around what do you like i like roaming around (laughs) i i believe a campaign should uh entail uh small group of explorers on a five-year mission to explore strange and 
<laughs> now, hang on a second. You know, that's funny, but I know. that's going to go to the next question after Carol. Um, no. Uh, yeah. I'm, why, why don't you have it as like a, like a resource that's running out or, or something for this confederation? And, you know, you know, they're sending feelers out to find new resources and things like that. Feelers. Feelers, you know, and so more of a diplomat right now is what more I'm of a diplomatic mission, but also diplomatic community. community. Yeah, go around, start killing the locals. Ah. Um, no, but um, the point. Where was I going with this? <laughs> I'm not sure. I wasn't even listening. I know nobody <laughs> never listens to anybody on this show. I, I was what? drawing a uh, cat uh, hating graffiti for Carol. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, no, the the uh, the thing in the process of uh, searching for resources and all that, it it takes you into uh, other civilizations and things like that, and you know could you know could involve to where you start incorporating them into your confederation or your cabal, whatever. Why does every conversation and diplomatic mission end up into an empire? Or not. Uh, logical progression. It could just be, okay, you're a pneumatic tribe following a migration of, um, you know, game or something like that, you know, s suddenly starts to notice that it's the, the size of the herds or whatever are getting smaller and smaller. Even Conan sat on a throne. There you go. Carol, last up. What do you think? Do you the like staying put or uh, globe trotting? Uh, I think I'm with Kyle on this one. I think if you try to run a long term campaign, now you short bits like cacophony, the way you're doing that, that works out really well for like staying in one place. But if you're running something that you want to go from like level one to level 20, uh, unless you, unless yeah, unless you really want to work at it and build your entire plot in that one city, I think travel is almost a necessity to keep things. <laughs> I don't necessarily think you have to go crazy on your on your um, kingdom stuff being so diverse like you have Russia and feudal Japan right next to each other. I think you can. I think it'd be cool to have them relate a little more uh, than that and not be that different. But otherwise, I yeah, I feel like I, I do feel like I like the I like the thought of traveling around. I think that's one of the interesting things too. I think about playing these games is, you know, especially when it's a even well, whoever develops the world is exploring that world that someone put all the time into developing. I want to see what you developed. I'd love to see more of what Philbar, you know, of, of Philbar. Um, I I love what I see so far. I'd love to see more of it. You know, a part of it is I'm exploring these things in, in my brain. And especially in a time where we're all kind of stuck at home, I think that's not a bad thing that at least we can get out in our imaginations and get out somewhere interesting. Right, because so, we aren't allowed to travel outside of America. Thank you, well, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. That's very, very true. But And that's what D&D &D was made for. It's, yeah. it's a mind game and a little bit of dice rolling. Or a lot of dice rolling. So so that brings me to point number three that I had in my head, the Star Trek conundrum. Uh, do you go from nation to nation, and are they vastly different or eerily similar? So <laughs> do you go where plant people or rock creatures make tunnels for you, and you kill them because you're scared <laughs> like of tabaxis uh starting with kyle <laughs> that'll ice <laughs> her <laughs> the only I good tabaxi is a dead tabaxi Taryn. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about the star trek conundrum uh i'm not a trekkie okay I get it. no i mean i've never watched it so i don't know the conundrum i've never seen the show it's <laughs> I don't like space to be honest with you. I don't like heights and outer space is like the greatest of heights. So it makes me uncomfortable to think about space related things. I like fantasy cuz it's on the earth. Um I guess what? Like kind of a west marches style campaign is what we're talking about. 
Yes. Where we're just going out, we're exploring, we're discovering new things. And the players decide how they react, how that country world is going to transform. Yeah, no, I like the idea. Like I said, putting a lot of this stuff into players' hands. At that point, you just take out your dice as the DM. You roll it across. You make a little map. The high numbers are really particular, powerful tribes. It may be a nation already made. Maybe it's... um. Uh, something similar to the Aztecs or uh, um, um, something, but just based on, say, the color of dice, the number Whoa! of people up there. <laughs> Jeez, uh, you only hey, get you to know what? I like your next dice. Now on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you literally can just take a handful of dice, throw it down, draw a map around it, and then you say, this is the starting point, go forward, and you just put a race in at every single dice point. Um, maybe depending on how close they land to each other, maybe it's more of an amalgamation, something like that. And the numbers just dictate how powerful they are and what a huge mistake it's going to be if you try and fight it. And then you let the players go. Kyle, judge an RPG or by the dice results, not by the color of the dice. <laughs> wow. No, that's fair. And actually, there was somebody, he did a YouTube, and I think he was like a teenager or something. Take a handful of dice and, you know, one is plains, two is mountains, three is rivers, and he just throws it out, draws the the border around it and that's, that's his map and i really never like that idea. that it's that's clever. really cool that's a really and cool the same way you draw your map you make your nations or your groups your societies within that map same technique and have at it if uh you did that youtube video give a shot we'll get your <laughs> ass on here and give you uh, credit where yeah. credit is due uh okay david what do you think the final frontier. <laughs> well, it depends on what type of campaign that you're running. Are you running a good campaign or an evil campaign? You know, it could be exploring or it could be. I do have. You this. do have that going. So. And I do like being second in command. So I think this <laughs> That's, is that is so campaign. appropriate, by the way, considering you are the evil GM. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's okay. He's a great he's just GM. Just a dick. <clears throat> I, I guess Taryn wants to join her sister. Go ahead, David. Uh, no, I like the whole resources. Uh, you know, finding, you know, type of model. Um, you know, colonization and stuff like that. It'd be really good. Um, yeah. uh, I mean, certainly even if you're running a good campaign, there can be evil bits in it where we're going to send you off to this place because the captain there is killing the natives like crazy and we need to get him to stop or we need you to go help the natives and curb what he's doing or vice versa, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's your point. To talk no, no, you made my point. You, you've made my point. So yeah, it could be, sorry, I, like sure, I want to keep going. Okay. No, it could be Take like it. the Roman Empire where, you know, you're serving circus and bread to your people because you've expanded so much. You have more mouths to feed. You have all this other crap going on. You now have to continue to go because if you don't, your people will starve. And Rome and the northern tip of Africa. There. Exactly. There you the go. desert was um, wheat fields. Mm -hmm. At that point, if you are part of that empire and you just have to keep forcing it going, it's like, yeah, no, what you're doing is absolutely awful. But if you don't do it, your family back home is going to starve a slow death. Right. Not to mention the horrible people in front of you who are just defending their home as best as they can is trying to kill you in the worst possible way imaginable. <laughs> You made a donation to the GOP today, didn't you? <laughs> you know it? For the greater good. That's oh, right. Oh, God, don't good. start that. <laughs> uh, Carol, what do you think? A uh, whole lot of wonderment or eh, not so much? 
I like a balance. Um, I don't think you should be like, you know, if they're interconnected, if the connected land masses, I don't feel like it should be so, you know, that the, the, the place next door should be so hugely dis different. That's like going out of the planet. I think the thing with Star Trek is you're going to different planets every week. So you can be as crazy as you want with uh, being how diverse they are. But I think if you're if you're talking about being on one world, I mean, if you progress a couple kingdoms away or a couple, you know, you know what I mean, a couple of kingdoms, these, whatever, uh, then yeah, or like you have an island, that island could be completely diverse. But I'd say if you're just going from place to place and in, in a fairly small area, I would keep them somewhat related. Um, uh, so I wouldn't go too nuts, I think is what I'm saying. I'm what trying I'm to. Saying is you keep it all the same. And I'm going to share some of my sperm. All, but I don't want to keep it all the same. I just don't want to be like, okay, get, I go from a land with which a traditional, you go like a traditional kingdom. I don't know what the hell you're doing. But then you go to land that's all, you know, plant people. I feel like that's just too much of a, you know, to me, there needs to be some transition between the two. So oh, that's fair. That's 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 my point. I I feel like it's unrealistic to go completely crazy. I want to. I like my games to still feel somewhat like they're plausible and real. Let me Even, throw a wrench at you, though. Yeah, you're in Happyville uh, with your nation. Next nation over, decimated. Fucking dragon moved in. Uh, okay. Shit changes rapidly when you cross over your border. But the question is, I mean, but even then, there's still probably some sort of a transition. So either some of the destruction is leached into my country, or it's not going to just end right at the border. There's still got to be a transition between the two. What if there's a big river? It, yeah, but it, we're talking about a dragon here, man, that can fly over that river. So, I mean, you have to put something in there that literally, you know, would have to end. I mean, I guess... Even I was gonna say like a for you know like a wildfire, but that even then that tops over rivers and stuff too. So I feel like there still needs to be some some something of a transition between the two, unless it really does make sense. And just because I'm not coming up with a good example right now, it doesn't mean they don't exist. Magical barrier. But I'm like, of the even, even I'm thinking about like your camp, like the the campaign, and I'm thinking about you know you've got you've got the blight and you've got this plague. You know, and right now maybe they're isolating the island, but I, you know, my whole theory is that there's a whole lot of, you know, world left and that disease or something is going to get out. And especially if it's like an evil that's controlling it, it's going to get out and it's going to spread around the world. It's not just going to stay on that one island. What's so, happening in Andorra? We do not know. Well, yeah. When, no! yeah the, the players would, yeah, the characters would not know because we're all stuck on the island. Uh, we haven't been voted off the island yet. <laughs> Not yet. Kyle, did you want to explain sperm? <laughs> sperm? What? Oh, I mean, that's the whole idea of building uh, uh, groups and societies, and that's the thing that you keep the same, but you make small little tweaks to out of work. You start with your main place and build every nation based on my sperm idea. Uh Sperm idea. I stole that sperm from someone else. It's are, are you going to post that on uh, Discord? Sperm. Huh? Post that on Discord. <laughs> Go right ahead. That would be amazing. No way. I really anyway, you know, it's as you build um, nations, as you build cities, towns, everything. Uh, everything has a lot of things, in, or they all have one thing in common: sperm. Um, societal. Um, what was kiss? Tendencies. Or can those two go together? Kissing sperm, I can yeah. kiss sperm goodbye. Wow. <laughs> My <laughs> eyebrow is twitching. <laughs> what am I watching here? I well, kiss to... is keep it simple, stupid. And yeah. sperm stands for? I don't. Society, political, economical, religion, and military. Yeah, Carol. So I don't know where your mind was at, but you want to catch up to the show? I've never heard of that. I'm sorry, before. people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I realized I had something else to say on this whole thing, too. Oh, one, of the, one of the things I... Yeah, 20 more minutes. Go. Hey, 
One of the things I did find interesting when I'm so sort of building my own world is the big thing is the differences in the governments and the differences in the rules. One place is tolerant of this and another place isn't. And I think that's one of the more interesting things that PCs can try to navigate. You know, it's easy if, if you don't know the rules, it's easy to break them. And then you can have some very interesting <clears throat> and bad, uh, you know, consequences of them breaking the rules. I think that even, I think that to me is the kind of different, so I dig differences like that, you know, and trying to have to learn about that society. Like the society could be different. And that would be a border thing. I, be I matriarchal, thinking, could be patriarchal, could yeah, be exactly. old people, could mm -hmm. be could only be the youth. Only the theocracy yeah. where they worship an evil God who embraces pain. And so this other nation cuts off their fingers and cuts their face and burns and tear out their eyeball. Oh, uh, what's that God's name again, Carol? Kyle. Oh, Zion. He wants uh, to say it because it's a Pathfinder God. Oh, there she goes. Again. There it is. There it Just is. throwing it in our faces. Uh, wow. Folks, if you can get a hold of a second edition Dungeon Master's Guide, there is a complete list of different uh, government styles as well yeah, as titles great. in there. An invaluable resource. Tui had all the best stuff. Uh, it says oh, nine o'clock, and that means the debate is about to start. Our debate is wrapping up. So let's do final thoughts. Reverse order, Kyle. Final thoughts. That's not reverse order. No, well, I started I'm with David, then I went to Carol, then I went with you on our but intro. We were last at the beginning, very beginning. Now he's gonna. And say I keep that. seeing you throwing peanuts in your mouth, so I gotta put you on the spot every time I see <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm a millennial. This is Reese's peanut butter puffs. Okay, oh, that'll, that'll work. Cereal's okay. good for you, no matter well, what time you do. Final thought. This him chewing, munching those. His final thought. This is a fucking huge topic, Frank. There's too <laughs> much to cover. You need to be a little bit more specific. I read everything from history to how to build a society to the empirical errors. There's too much information to process and give to you guys. Every single uh, one of our informative sessions is the same way. We never adequately cover a topic completely. It's built That's that way on purpose. <laughs> Carol, final thoughts. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other final thoughts uh, that go along with this. Uh, I think I, I said it. Um, uh, I, I said pretty much I think all I need to say about that for the time being. But I agree. There's actually so much more we can discuss and maybe – Maybe we could carry this on in next week and maybe the week after that and the week after that. Good one. This I'll would be the do that. great one. This is a great topic for GMs uh, and world building and such. And and it's it's funny, it does it makes me even think about what, what I've created. So um Carol yeah. has decided next Tuesday we're talking about tribes. Nomadic hunters and gatherers, as well as the beginning of an agricultural. Possibly talking about a city state afterwards. Good job, Carol. You've done it. Yeah. Right. Tribes it is it. next week. Uh, although it was slated to be Monday and Magic Item, which is freaky shit. David, final thoughts. Final thought. Uh, yeah, it is your world. Do with it what you like. <laughs> you can either set it up to where you have... Um, you know, a set of parameters to work, work within like a, like a directive, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just Fine running directive. with, yeah, I'm just running with the Star Trek references. <laughs> going all over my head, man. <laughs> and the that's prime why. directive is the rule that must never be broken and is broken every, every fucking time. episode. Okay, wait, wait. Is this the prime directive like you're not supposed to mess with someone's? Yes. <laughs> I knew that one. Mm -hmm. yeah, and they break it every rule. They break it every week, I think. There oh, you yeah. go. Folks, thanks for joining us. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy our stuff, it's down there. If you want to join us in chat Discord, it's down there. Most importantly, if you want to see it on the show or on the one shot, 
mhobo inc twitter gmail hit us up most importantly uh time's running out make sure you're registered to vote and vote even if you're gonna Bye. vote the asshole vote uh yeah no, vote no, dice no, for no, him. No. thanks pirate dog dice uh for giving me dice that are gonna kill taryn and <laughs> my game always smells better with adventure sense from odd fish games folks that's it Turn oh no kind of oh, to say. To our archive <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Great, Kyle. Stay right there, right there. See, she hates the vaccine. She hates. <laughs>